Hello everybody, this is Aaron Brock. I'll be sending out uh, a weekly, if not more frequent, uh, email updates on the coronavirus, COVID-19. Our medical staff has been meeting and talking about uh, this situation and investigating um, all the information and trying to pass along some facts. There's a lot of misinformation and speculation in the media, but we'll try to boil down some of the important concepts. So the situation summary, in China, the epidemic peaked and plateaued a few weeks ago, and since then, uh, since Jan uh, February 2nd, it's been declining steadily in China. However, uh, there are more new cases outside of China, and that's what's raised the level of concern over the last uh, few weeks, especially in this last week. There was a lot of uh, new cases in, in Japan and Italy, South Korea, Iran. Um, However, 97% of the cases are in China. There is about 81,000 known cases. Of course, those are known cases. I think it's safe to say that there's more uh, cases out there that aren't confirmed. But the confirmed cases of 81,000, 78,000 of those are in China. And, and uh, that's 97% of the cases. And the other countries, as I just mentioned, uh, have been the ones recently who have seen a spike in the number of COVID-19 cases. In the United States, there's 14 documented cases. That's not including the individuals who returned um, via a State Department chartered flight. There's 53 if you count those in individuals. Um, again, probably more cases than this, but this is the documented uh, number of people infected by COVID-19 in the United States. No deaths thus far in the United States. Another question is uh, how contagious and deadly is COVID-19? It's, it's a pretty complex question and there's a lot of uh, epidemiologists trying to understand the spread of this disease, a lot of predictive analysis and mathematics uh, and, and it's our best guess right now that uh, coronavirus is slightly more contagious than the flu. I've, I've had a uh, link in the email here where you can look at how those numbers were calculated. The difficult part is that as with the flu, COVID-19 sometimes uh, presents with no symptoms or very mild symptoms. And so these, these don't always uh, create a serious uh, condition from a symptom standpoint, which is good news for the people that have it, but bad news in the efforts trying to manage it because people may not know they are infected uh, and then that doesn't allow them to take precautions and, and avoid um, spreading to others. How deadly? It's a bit hard to say, but right now our best guess is that it's about three times more deadly than the flu. So uh, roughly 14 out of a thousand would die. So that's the CFR of 1.4. So that's essentially the estimate right now is if a thousand out of a thousand people that have coronavirus, 14 would, uh, would pass away, where the flu is about five out of a thousand. So a little comparative information there for you. Uh, the CDC, uh, regarding the flu, we're experiencing a pretty severe flu season. The CDC estimates 16,000 deaths in the United States from the flu currently, and the season's not over yet. Um, I think 25,000 is not a, a number that's too far out of the realm of possibility for deaths in the United States from the flu. Travel, uh, as, as is uh, previously mentioned, um, South Korea and China are the biggest concerns where the CDC, and I have links to all of this information that I'm saying in the email, the CDC has deemed China, uh, South Korea, and, and this also is the World Health Organization, China and South Korea has a warning level three and instructed to avoid all non-essential travel. Uh, Italy and Japan are alert level two, and it just says, you know, take extra precautions Right now, the main thing that that means is if you're immune compromised, an older individual, perhaps um, you know younger individuals that don't have immune system, um, you know robustness, it might be worth considering uh, postponing non-essential travel to those areas of Japan and uh, Italy. 
as you probably noticed, there's a lot of information in the media yesterday and the day before about um, an IOC member talking about what this means for the Olympics. Obviously, it's all speculative at this time, but I don't think it should come as a surprise to anybody that canceling the Olympics is uh, an option that's got to be on the table. Obviously, if this disease spreads rapidly and is not contained and, and there's serious risk for athlete health and uh, safety at the Olympics, you need to consider canceling it. So um, the media likes to take that and run with it, uh, understandably. And so I think that everyone needs to uh, just let, you know, see how this all plays out. I think right now it's, it's way too early to say. You see media uh, headlines such as clock is ticking, uh, Olympics to be canceled, and, and other uh, pretty sensational headlines, and, and uh, yet I saw another headline that actually quoted this individual saying, it's business as usual for now, which I think is the best way to proceed. It's business as usual for now, um, but we don't know how this goes in the future. Obviously, this is a serious uh, medical and health situation here with the coronavirus, and we just uh, aren't real sure how it goes. There's a USOPC put out an update a couple days ago, essentially, um, just reiterating commitment uh, to the high standards for the game's preparedness, 100% focused on, on athlete health and safety, working with all of the necessary entities to ensure that this will happen and that they're on top of it and will stay um, updated with all necessary parties. We'll take a little more detailed look at some precautions and immune system efforts uh, in the future. Right now, the main recommendations are the same infectious disease prevention strategies that you'll see um, even as it relates to non-coronavirus um, conditions. Get a flu vaccine. It's not going to you know, prevent the coronavirus, but it will prevent uh, the influenza spread and will uh, decrease symptoms uh, regarding the flu. Avoid contact with sick people. If you're sick, limit contact with others. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Cover your nose and mouth with something disposable, ideally like a tissue when you cough or sneeze, and then you throw that tissue in the trash after you use it. Clean frequently touched items, cell phones, in an airplane, clean the seating area, the tray tables, the, the, the screens that you're touching on the back of the, the chairs, the windows, the armrests, air vents. Clean your hands often by washing them with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Count to 20 when you're washing your hands. It'd be interesting to see how long that actually is. It's, it seems like a long time to be washing your hands, but uh, a lot of the research shows to uh, make sure that all the viral particles are um, debris from the hands during uh, hand washing, it really does take 20 seconds. And there's a, a whole system on how you're supposed to wash hands as well. The alcohol-based hand sanitizers are also effective uh, between 60 and 95 percent alcohol. Um, it's important to clean hands after going to the bathroom, before eating, and after causing uh, coughing, sneezing, or, or blowing your nose. So those are some things to consider. Again, links to everything I'm talking about here in the email. Um, in closing, COVID-19, it poses a significant health concern. And we'll continue to monitor the situation and we'll be in touch. Thank you.